Okay, so when, when we're examining the dog, and in fact from when the client arrives, um, I like to think of it as a bit of a dance. We keep a rhythm going to it. Um, we keep it moving along, so we don't want the customer, you know, sitting down and staying for half the day. Similarly, we don't want the dog sitting down either, because once we've started our examination in the dog in the dog's head, it's like, oh, okay, this is a job. I know what I'm doing. If they put their little bottom on the ground, it's a little bit like when men sit in front of the TV. The brain goes, and it's really hard to get them reactivated again, which we all know. Um, so I like to keep it going. One of the things I'd suggest, you know, is get your own dog or a dog that you know really well if you don't have your own dog um, and just watch yourself on video, you know, how you examine the dog, how you touch it and if it's not in a particular rhythm you'll, you'll see the spots where you're getting a little bit nervous, maybe you don't like touching their bottom or something like that and then you can work on that on your own dog. Um, and um, once you, you'll find that your hands just do it automatically because it, it's like muscle memory, it just comes really easily and away we go. So one of the things I've noticed with dogs is it, that they're so good at picking up on our emotions and, and how we feel. So if, if you are confident, a dog knows you're confident. If you are unsure, a dog will know you're unsure. And the more unsure the dog feels you are, the more worried they're going to be because they're not really sure what you're going to do to them and you'll have more issues with them. So you know, I think the main thing is the more you practice, uh, with any dog, it doesn't have to be grooming, just you know, go down the local uh, charity, um, you know, animal welfare league or any of those sorts of places, volunteer to walk the dogs or, gr or wash the dogs or brush the dogs, doesn't really matter. The more time you spend working with an animal, the easier it'll be, the more confident you'll be, the more comfortable you'll be, and therefore the more the dogs will respect you and you'll have less hassles with even the most difficult dog. Another thing, get as much practice as you can handling dogs. Get a friend to film you because you know you might think you're in the floor but when you look at it you're going to see little flaws that you can correct which when you're actually doing it at work makes it so much easier. The more you do something the better you become at it. If you're happy and relaxed doing it, hey that's a bonus for the dog and you. If you can't find a dog you can always go to your local rescue group. They'd be more than willing to allow you to help them out okay. But don't go straight to the dog and start manhandling it all over the place, okay? This is a more subtler flair. Use your body language. Use your body itself to show the dog that you're nice and relaxed about what you're doing. You're not grabbing, you're not holding too tight. You're trusting that tiny gap between you and the dog's coat where it's just a frame now and it's not so much held, but it's more guiding. We're guiding the dog, we're not clamping on to the dog because that's a fight hold, okay? So remember, flowing straight into it. <laughs>